we are still in the same spot we were before trying to get this really thick liner to sew together without breaking a thousand needles so I just broke one more but we are almost done I had to call in reinforcements in the form of a Janome skyline so that's what I'm working on right now so here's the part where I give you advice on what not to do and in this case what not to do is maybe don't do so many thick layers a cotton lining probably would have changed it a little bit uh, not cork on cork on wax canvas I say this if you're on a domestic machine if you're on a juki you're probably fine it's really where the piping was that I had the most issue because it was trying to go through like eight layers and my machine is not built to handle that so what I ended up having to do was hand turn on those very thick parts lengthen my stitch length and then if the needle got stuck I would back it up and then move position just a hair enough to where the needle would go through so just FYI that's what I ended up having to do um, just on those really really thick areas where the piping is but my advice would maybe be not to do so many thick layers if you are using a lower end domestic machine now we are at the point where we're ready to birth our bag what I'm going to do first is go ahead and trim my seam allowance down and clip my corners you want to be very careful when doing this and you also want to taper it out for that opening uh, that you're going to have to close up here in just a second you do not want to short yourself there so take your time and work your seams here work your corners make sure you're you know stretching them out as much as possible you want that to lay the way that you want it to lay when it's done I'll close up the um, lining here the lining hole that we just bird the bag through and I'm using a matching green thread so that you can't really see it and I get as close as possible to the um, edge here With wax canvas, you'll notice that the needle leaves some marks on your fabric that you'll be able to see, especially with the lining right here. What you can do is blast it with a hair dryer, a heat gun, or you can just leave it in your warm car and they, those will disappear over time. <laughs> can still see my marks for the straps here however they moved up farther than I had planned so I will probably end up moving those just a little bit to just make the straps look nicer when they're sitting on the bag I've decided to make a brick cork strap as we discussed in the last video of the Smithfield bag you could make it out of wax canvas you could two-tone it with a different fabric uh, there are multiple ways to make your straps my go-to strap is going to be a trifold method. Oh, well, that's what I call it anyway. But it's for durability and because I like a little cushion in my straps. So what I do is I take the final width of the strap and I multiply by four and then I just do a rectangle the length that it specifies. So the pattern actually calls for pre-made straps, which I don't have. This rectangle is going to be four inches by 32 inches because I want a finished strap of one inch. I hope that makes sense. You can use fabric fusion to tack your sides down. I'm going to take each side and fold it into the middle and then I'm going to fold those sides on themselves. So there will not be a raw edge anywhere on my finished strap. They will all be completely enclosed and the strap will have this finished look to it except for the ends. Make sure when you're using fabric fusion that you do a little at a time. It does dry super quickly.
And here they are, my beautiful straight flat straps. That took me a long time to learn. A lot of times my strap would end up looking like this, kind of twisted. And the reason was is that I didn't take the time to make sure they were flat and straight prior to sewing. What I'm trying to decide is how I want the ends to look. I thought about this, but given what I've been going through with the thick material, I don't think I want to do that. I think what I'll end up doing is shaping the ends of this and finishing it somehow with um, fabric fusion or maybe some edge paint and then just riveting that to the bag. Once I get my edges cut, my rounded edges, I'm going to mark kind of where I want my rivets to go, just kind of where they look nice. I'm doing about a half inch from the end and a half inch apart, I believe. I'm then going to mock up kind of what I want my straps to look like, make sure everything looks kosher, and then go and punch my holes with a little punch I have with my rivets off to the side here. That's why you can't see me. And then I'll go ahead and do that to the bag as well, and then place the rivets on. Here I'm showing you how to finish out the edges using Fabric Fusion. I basically just put a glob over all the edges, wipe it down with my finger and then make sure you wipe the edge of the cork. It does shine a little glossy. You could stop there finishing the edges if you want to, but in the next little section I will show you what to do if you want to use edge paint. I'm using the punch to mark the holes that I've already punched into the strap onto the exterior of the bag so I know exactly where to punch my holes. I'm over here off to the side because you definitely want to use like a wooden block underneath when you're doing some punching. You do not want to do this on your cutting mat. Here's where we are so far. We have our holes punched and we're ready to put on our straps which we have right here out of the brick cork fabric. What I have left to do is finish these edges before I rivet them onto the bag. You can do that a couple of different ways. You could use the Fabric Fusion pen, which I have already done here. You can see it shines a little bit glossy, but you will see the fabric backing. It didn't quite give it the polish look I want, and since you're going to see it all the time, I decided that I would go ahead and attempt for the first time on video something new to Fabric Funhouse which is the Giardini Edge Paint selection. So I'm using the Max Edge Base Edge Paint, but first what I'll have to do is apply this base coat dense, let it dry for 30 minutes, and then you'll sand it down to create a smooth base for your edge paint to adhere to. If you order the color set from Fabric Funhouse, you'll get this handy dandy applicator pen. You'll just dip that into your base coat and it's a roller pen so when you roll it over this it should evenly apply as well as can be the base coat to your edge. The main thing I think that you'll want to do is make sure all of the fabric edging is covered. You don't want any stray little things to get out. Uh, we are using a color edge paint and so if I still have some black showing it'll look a little bit weird. So just FYI, make sure all your edges are covered, uh, make sure it's kind of a smooth application and then uh, we're going to let this dry for 30 minutes and then we will sand it down and apply our edge paint. 
side note, because I didn't do it the first time, make sure you wash your applicator pen thoroughly after you use it with the base coat. It does make it quite a pain in the butt to do it later on. We are prepped and ready to apply the edge paint to our base coat layer. You get 18 different colors when you order a beginner color set. I was going to mix the red and dark brown together to match the brick. I thought that might be the best way to go, but then I stumbled upon this color and it's just called brown, but it has a very red tint to it. And I think it will match our brick cork fabric close enough to where it really won't bother me, hopefully. Using the same technique as applying the base coat, we are going to be applying our colored edge paint. You want to make sure you get all of the edges covered, all of your fabric backing covered, and apply a very thick, even coating onto your strap end here. Allow it to dry for 30 minutes, and then we'll check it and see if we want to add another coat. This is something that you can build up which is magnificent, so if you want a really thick layer, you can do that. Not bad, I'm actually pretty impressed with how it looks. Since you have the option of building up a coat, I'm checking it out and I see that you can still see kind of the divots of the fabric underneath through the edge paint. So I do think I will be adding a second coat. Um, the way that we'll do that is the same way we did with the base coat. You're going to sand it and then you're going to apply a second coat and allow it to dry for 30 minutes. All right, it's been 30 minutes, so let's check out our second coat of edge paint here. And you can already tell it looks so much better than just having the one coat on it. Um, what I will say is you could probably prep your fabric better would be helpful. Make sure your cuts are very straight, that you don't have any uneven layers, um, no stragglers of thread. But, you know, just messing with this, it looks like it will not crack. It's got a lot of flexibility to it, so I think it's going to work out perfectly. I don't expect there to be a lot of bending on this strap point, so I think it's wonderful for our first endeavor into the Giardini edge paint. All right, let's finish up our bag. All we have left to do are to rivet on the straps. I've already poked the holes in both the strap and the bag itself. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a rivet setter that came with my set. One thing I didn't do that you might want to do because it can damage the heads of your rivet is to make sure it's on the flat surface. Don't rivet it like sandwiched in between your bag or anything. This is when I knew I messed up yet again. I actually didn't know yet, but I will here in a second. Um, what I, happened is, is I placed the hole in the wrong place. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but it's going at the completely wrong angle. It should be going towards the outside of the bag. It is not. It is faced pretty much straight down. So what ends up happening is I have to poke another hole, which you definitely don't want to do. So don't do what I do. Make sure you double check before you go around with your punch and make sure that your all your angles are correct and all your holes are in the right place, etc. before you uh, finalize doing that. All right, here she is in all her glory. It was a long, hard road. It was a lot of work, but I love this bag. I think it's beautiful. I think it's unusual. I think it has some um, very unique identifying features about it. And I do really kind of like the, uh, it's not really a neutral color scheme, but it's not normally what I go for. So I kind of like it. Um, thank you for joining me on this journey. So. I am not a great sewist, to state it lightly. 
I am, we'll call me a mediocre sewist, and I think that's where my tutorials are going to come from. I'm coming from a place where I sew on a run-of-the-mill machine. I'm usually tackling a, a pattern for the first time, and it's definitely not going to be a work of art. It's just kind of going to be a work in progress. So <laughs> I hope that helps some of you that are just starting out on your journey to see the mistakes that I make and to not make them yourself, hopefully, but also to kind of go over what I've learned. So with this bag, it was my first time doing piping. It was only my second time using rivets in something. It was my first time using edge paint. And um, it was really my first time um, putting everything together that had so many thick layers. That was very difficult for me. <laughs> so, you know, I might put a little bit more thought process into what I'm choosing to make in the future, given the machine that I have. But it was doable. I did get through it. I broke some needles on the way, but it was very, very doable. So. I think the main thing I took away from this bag is take your time. Make sure that you understand the directions. You'll see me reading things over and over and over again just to make sure that I grasp the concept because I, I'm a little thick skulled sometimes. So that being said, uh, the piping, the only thing I didn't do the first time around was get close enough um, to it when I'm sewing everything together. So basting it, you don't really have to be that close. But when you're sandwiching it and you're sewing it very close together, I had to make a second pass and I don't regret doing that. Um, don't be afraid to go back to the machine if you have to. The Giardini, I might have made my edges a little bit smoother than I did in the end, um, but I still think they look fantastic. My stitching looks decent enough. I did test a lot on to see what my stitch length needed to be on this. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, actually. Uh, let's see here. This one opens up really nicely. I The other thing I might have done, um, if I had to do two over again, would be to actually stitch um, just a row of stitches in one of these pockets, make it a little bit smaller for my phone or something. Um, they're very big, open pockets, so I, I can see myself getting lost between pockets and main lining, so that would me. That would probably be the only thing that I would do differently on the interior. Um, this is going to be a primarily water resistant bag over time. I can re-wax it, which I love. The other thing is, is that this lining isn't sewn in. So, you know, if you spill a drink in here, you just pull this out, shake it out, wipe it off and dry it. And now your lining is back to normal. So I love that feature of wax canvas. I do love a good, <laughs> lining that I can pull out because I have a toddler and uh, I'm not surprised at all if something spills. So anyway, um, but there she is. This is the Smithfield bag by Jen Fox. I hope this helped walk you through how to create one of these on your own and give you a few ideas of what not to do. So I really appreciate you guys tagging along with me and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.